future of our dynamic creative and real time digital marketing uh, welcome chenmay welcome lawrence I'll, thank you uh, you know unfortunately i am somebody who like to speak a little more than what a panelist should be so i'll try and set the context to this in uh, a speaker mode first and then go ahead uh, asking them questions of uh, what they should be talking about right? so way back in 2013 uh, i worked in an advertising agency where uh, we worked with uh, an insurance company and we wanted to do something really good for performance marketing for them uh, and there was no dynamic creative available there was no technology available to do dynamic creative serving at that point of time so what we did is we used uh, display campaigns to create smaller cohorts and uh, reach out to audience with uh, creatives which will uh, touch their heart right insurance touch their heart at that point of time right so a male uh, with a small kid of 2 year old to 5 year old will see a different creative and a male with a kid of 5 year to 15 year will see a different creative a female will see a different creative right and that really did a great job at that point of time a rough uh, click through rate on a display creative will be around 0.1% 0.2% with this kind of uh, cohorts where we created uh, about 40 50 odd different cohorts we delivered above 1 1.5% ctr right which is like 5x 10x uh, ctr and that that was magical at that point of time right and then 2014 odd we started seeing programmatic coming into india through uh, dv360 uh, double click as it was called at that point of time cut to 2022 2023 uh, you know india like all of us in our industry should be very proud of of course i was not part of the team who's delivered that but cadbury with the help of a lot of uh, i mean with the help of ogilvy and group m as partner delivered a creative a video creative across india okay where shahrukh khan is talking to each individual telling them hey you should be uh, celebrating your diwali by buying in from a local store near you right and that audio will tell you the name of the local store which is just near your house it will show you name of the uh, the kirana store you know just there in that video creative right that's the power of digital uh, dynamic creative right of course the most important thing is not what it got uh, at cans right cans 2023 uh, came to india because of that creative but the kind of message that it delivered to audience and the kind of upliftment that it got for cadbury as a brand was brilliant right so this is the context to what magic a dynamic creative can do with that i think i will end my speaker uh, mode and i'll start my moderator mode so uh, i think both of you been part of uh, this industry for over uh, 15 years and uh, you see the change from static creative to video creative to uh, you know uh, programmatic and dynamic creative how do you see the rise of dynamic creative uh, changing uh, the time energy uh, creative thinking investment into technology uh, consumer experience and uh, measurement i think it was a great context setting by meher uh, where he presented one of the case uh, and i believe uh, i represent an agency and when i talk about from an agency perspective i really feel that uh, programmatic and dynamic creative technology has really uh, given us a great scope of improvement in our campaigns and i'll ta- talk largely from a campaign perspective because that is for a brand uh, the way it uh, really helps is from a consumer experiences where you have one to one connection uh, with the brand and i'll take an example of a food tech uh, uh, brand which really does this uh, well where they send notifications uh, on the kind of food that you've been consuming on the day of that you've been consuming if there are 
times when you don't order for let's say five days six days there is a notification that gets sent that it's been a while that you've visited us and you've bought something so that is really uh, a good personalized experience uh, that a brand really gives to the uh, 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 to the consumer that said uh, with the dynamic creativity in place you get a lot of options of a b testing because it is dynamically be done uh, there's a lot of data that gets collected and that is why you get to play with that data to understand which kind of communication which kind of theme what is working really well uh, with the brand uh, and that is the reason um, we see a lot of efficiencies from a media standpoint because if your communication is spot on uh, the click through rates and the conversion rates are going to be extremely good which means that you are getting that additional um, uh, bank for the buck uh, that you are spending which also means that there's a lot of measurement opportunities that come in you have a lot of data to understand which again i said that which kind of theme which kind of ad which kind of tonality which kind of communication is working with the with for the brand with with kind of set of consumer which really gives us a lot of uh, information to optimize our campaigns so again optimization is one of the extremely key thing that from a media standpoint it helps the brand and the consumers as well thanks so um, I think the last time, the first time that I heard about uh, DCO was as I was discussing almost in 2007, 2008. And it's been a wonderful journey from there till now, the way it has uh, progressed. Uh, from my perspective, I'll speak from a platform's perspective because we've been uh, engaging a lot of agencies and brands to use this technology. Uh, it's not only uh, the specification that a user sees or the, co uh, the uh, specific banner that a user sees, but it's also used more from a, we call it triggers, right? In hybrid, we call it triggers, but even weather can be taken as uh, into the DCO segment. So when we have tied up with a uh, weather platform where weather specifically, if there's a change in weather, you can have a particular creative being shown if uh, it's hot, cold, depending on how the precipitation is, it can be shown. So that is very effective. From a from brand's perspective, they are reaching the right kind of audience. They are reaching the audience where it is needed. And most importantly, uh, it der derives a very good uh, CTR. That's what we look for at the end of the day. So I think, um, I think it's very important that this matures further. And the beauty of uh, DCO is that many of them have got it right now. And that is just going to progress further. And for us, uh, it's just not precipitation, it's even market triggers. When the market is going high or low, that can also be something that can be uh, optimized. So I've just thrown some more ideas into it. <laughs> so I think, uh, you know, the, the CTR bit and, uh, you know, all of that definitely is great right but at, at the same time uh, you know you know because i represent a brand while um, uh, we are very finicky about uh, you know the way our creatives are so right the the kind of uh, consistency that's been maintained on a uh, brand expectation right with with dynamic creative right a lot of us on the brand side fear that we will we will probably uh, you know breach the brand guidelines or we will probably breach the regulatory guidelines which is which is a bigger uh, fear for regulated uh, industry how how do you how do you solve for that for brands yeah, so I think uh, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting question. Reason being, uh, while we'll talk from uh, largely from a media and advertising perspective, I want to uh, put throw some light on uh, the three parties that are involved in creative uh, development. One is the brand, uh, second is the media agency or the advertiser, and third is the creative agency. Now extremely extremely important for three of them to come together on a single platform and set certain guardrails of what needs to be communicated and how it needs to be communicated because see at the end of the day we are talking about automation and we are talking about it being dynamic so when it is dynamic it can pull anything from anywhere so but it only pulls from what we actually feed the system with and hence it becomes extremely essential for all the three partners that is your brand uh, creative agencies and media agencies to sit on a table, formulate that algorithm of what needs to be communicated, how it needs to be communicated, how it needs to be shown. Only then feed it into the system. Because what will happen is a lot of times uh, 
creative unfortunately that is how industry is working that creative and media doesn't talk to each other that often uh, you will have a separate creative agency you'll have a separate media agency a brand will talk to both of them but there of course are the chinese whispers where cer certain part of information definitely will be loosed out hence what happens is uh, it's very important for everybody to come on the same page set the guidelines set the guardrails and then upload every single thing into the system for it to be pulled dynamic dynamically and uh, i've seen a lot of good results when that happens uh, when your creative and media are talking to each other so that the gaps are actually navigated i think uh, this starts right from inception uh, most importantly is uh, a brand its creative agency and the agency needs to know that they are going to put this in a in a very advanced uh, environment and i think with that intention everything gets solved uh, the beauty is also that you can speak to whoever your uh, platform is and take uh, understanding from them we have a lot of agencies who come and speak to us and say that you know this is what it is they know what we are going to serve at the end of the day but it is very important that there's a dialogue between us and them you can't change a lot because in the first three phases it's already uh, locked and keyed everything is in but yeah we can give in our own ideas and this will uh, you know you can avoid a lot of uh, problems at the end of the day uh, from a dco perspective what you have fed the system like you said uh, there's no uh, there is no spillage anywhere but yes at times when you have not got the strategy right there is a possibility of that happening so i think right from inception the brand needs to know that it's going into an advanced system where there is this kind of uh, ask from the system i think that will solve everything just just uh, you know just adding to uh, this uh, you know in a quick uh, you know point right so so you know what lawrence was suggesting earlier weather based uh, you know creative and weather based uh, you know start and stop of campaign right that's something that a lot of marketers do right if you were if you were to you know like serve a creative to somebody when there is a storm right you don't want to do that right so there are so when, whenever there's dynamic a creative to be served you will also have to pre identify things you know which can go wrong with the data yeah. and put a filter to that say these are not the things that we will go with right because uh, that that's that's something that will put off consumer very easily right you don't want to go and tell them tumhare yahan toofan aaya insurance le lo right no that's not what ideally they want to do so uh, yeah so uh, you know dynamic creative is is really really nice right but uh, you know there are there are times when uh, you know we've heard of stories where it's been um, so personalized that consumers feel it's intrusive uh, to their personal life how do you balance uh, that as a agency and as a platform do you have some no do list which will which will go to a client saying these are not the things that you should do when you use dynamic creative so that your consumers don't feel that you're breaching their uh, privacy right so see uh, uh, one of the interesting things from a programmatic is uh, we all know when to start unfortunately a lot of times we don't know where where to stop or when to stop so uh, we go so overboard or i would say brand or uh, advertisers go so overboard in communicating the message that they want to that they forget that they are uh, actually killing the privacy of uh, the consumer so there has to be a frequency cap uh, that needs to be there uh, in terms of how or when we want to show the ad uh, as you rightly mentioned uh, that toofan aaya insurance le lo might not be the right communication so what is the subtle way of communicating uh, Uh, the need of the product uh, during that uh, option that also needs to be extremely well tackled and again uh, don't overdo anything uh, there has to be a lot of times what happens is uh, brand uh, 
they remarket or they use dynamic creative basis the consumers uh, browsing history or a lot of other data consumption points that we have on uh, the, from the digital ecosystem uh, so they don't know where to stop because uh, maybe i have already purchased the product and i've already out of the system but i'll keep on getting that communication to purchase or to make uh, that instant which also emphasize uh, the data collection part so that data needs to be collected that data needs to be refined in terms of how we are using this dynamic creativity because if let's say talking about an fmeg category i have already purchased an ac now i am not going to purchase an ac for next um, most likely 3 to 5 years but i'll still get dynamically targeted uh, ad because i am in that in market cycle or the purchase cycle for last 30 days now that is something that the tech needs to solve and that is how a brand uh, media agency should be working so that this there is a balance uh, no do list of course is something that a frequency cap needs to be maintained communication has to be extremely relevant uh, you need to know when to stop and from a technicality point of view you need to actually set up your campaigns right so that there is no ad fraud that is happening there are no invalid clicks that are happening because at the end of the day we are too dependent on automation so there has to be a human monitoring that uh, we are doing from a programmatic standpoint i totally buy the human uh, intervention in this because it's it's not all machine right at the end of the day we have to uh, keep that in mind but yes uh, keeping that as a reference point uh, most of the platforms today have this option of white labeling, black labeling. Uh, at the same time, it needs to be as recent as it is. Because, you know, we are all, uh, the ads are all shown in next to content or in content, right? So, I think uh, it's very dynamic. At the end of the day, if there is something that has happened yesterday or just now, it should be put in the in that white, white label or the black label that don't do. This, this kind of brand safety, at least we have, I'm sure, and most of the platforms do have it uh, in. But this is very important, and this is the way you avoid that kind of uh, uh, mishap, as they say, because uh, we have had, um, mostly from the FMCG perspective, we have had them be very clear with us that uh, we don't want it to be on, um, on content that is... Uh, again, very non-specific to their brand. So this kind of discussion is very, very important from our perspective. But we also get in touch with them back saying, hey, you know what, there is something that has happened. Do you want us to take that off? Uh, most of the times we take it off ourselves, but we, it is better that we inform the agency and the brand to avoid this kind of a mishap. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So uh, one, you know, Principally, a uh, very strong thumb rule that uh, all of us, you know, in, in, in this industry should look at, right, whether for uh, the brand that you work for or you work for a platform or you work for an agency that you're working with a client, whenever there is a dynamic creative uh, to be served, right, and you feel that something is not acceptable for you to be seen, that's absolutely no-no to go with, right. So you should try and put your foot down if you are uh, talking to your management as a brand or you're talking to your client as an agency or platform that, hey, I don't think this is something that you should do because, uh, you know, I will not be comfortable seeing an ad like this, right? Uh, second thing very important, if you're working in a brand or you're working for a brand category which is very sensitive to privacy, right? You have to be very, very careful of what do you serve and where do you serve, right? If you were serving a creative on a CTV, okay, a dynamic creative on a CTV, for uh, the consumer who's seen a product on your website, which is slightly uh, not okay with him or her to be seen uh, with the family, it should not be served on a CTV, right? If, uh, if a creative has been served to an audience who may have a kid uh, watching something on YouTube or playing some games on the same device, it should, or another device with the same credential, right? You shouldn't be serving a creative on uh, content which is not meant for uh, his or her age group, right? So these are few nuances I think all of us will have to uh, look at, right? Any, any pitfalls that you see with dynamic creative, uh, programmatic advertising for uh, brands? 
See, pitfalls, uh, as I said, that programmatic or dynamic thing only work when you have good amount of data that is fed into the system. Otherwise, it is going to be haywire, right? So it's very important for all the brands to understand the nuances of how a programmatic works, uh, give that uh, platform time to understand the data. While, of course, there are predefined cohorts uh, that are created. But at the end of the day, there is a prospecting phase for each and every campaign. It requires certain amount of clicks, certain amount of impressions for uh, uh, the campaign to understand what kind of uh, data is being collected and then uh, the dynamic creative creativity happens uh, that is part number one part number two is uh, definitely a brand i think should also invest into third party data trackers uh, because we are too dependent on maybe a platform or a partner uh, but if there is a third party measurement it gives that validation whether uh, your click or an impression have been served correctly uh, whether it is uh, served in a brand safe environment whether it is served uh, without any fraud or uh, without any bot clicking uh, for for you and uh, hence it becomes extremely important for you to associate or partner with a third party tracker and third and uh, foremost uh, i think the, uh, or lastly i would i would say that uh, brand needs to understand be a little more patient for programmatic to work and the, for the dynamic creative to work uh, because it's again going to be a little bit of A-B testing that is going to happen because platform is also evolving, learning from the data that is being fed. Hence, your collection, data collection systems or mechanism has to be extremely strong, right from your impression collection to a click to uh, the end objective, whether that person uh, or a click is happening on a website or any other platform. So that entire loop needs to be finished. Otherwise, we'll keep on running into a, a discussion where a creative is not performing or the campaign wasn't successful or CTRs are not correct or multiple uh, reasons. But the entire methodology or mechanism has to be set correctly. Otherwise, we'll keep on falling into the pits. I like your statement, patience. That uh, that is something that we need to allow the system to actually learn and, uh, depending on the data, put the right thing forward. Uh, I personally had a few experiences with weather, because weather is something, and you know in Mumbai how the weather is. Uh, past two days was cold, and before that it was pretty hot. So. Uh, with weather, we, uh, we try and put a human intervention there because it's very, very important uh, at the end of the day when you are serving through DCO, you have firstly all the data in place. It should cul culminate into what is being uh, shown out there. But at the same time, you need to have somebody monitoring it on a regular basis. Being very simple, uh, the statement being very simple is that because there is fluctuation so fast, uh, and then I would say the same thing with market triggers. The fluctuations are so fast that you need to have some kind of guardrails in place so that the wrong creative is not shown to anyone. And uh, I think all of us synonymously agree that we have to personally look at these things and you know put that into place. Uh, yes, the platform is there, everything is there the data is collected at the right time, you are able to monitor it. But monitoring is the underlining word out here. And uh, I think from a platform perspective, from an agency perspective, and from a brand perspective, we all synonymously agree with that and we put that into place here. Yeah. Hey, Chinmay, I think I'll ask you one question. I'll ask him one question in interest of time rather. Uh, so one, uh, you know, as a, as a brand, uh, custodian, right? You work with uh, brands very closely. What uh, What are your uh, you know strategies for m balancing uh, dynamic creative and managing you know the privacy for the consumer at the same time? How does brand plan uh, that? And how w what are your suggestions to brand for that? Right. So again, uh, uh, I am like an engineer and a marketer at the same time. So data is extremely crucial for me. Uh, so whenever I am in meetings with uh, my clients, uh, an interesting observation is that everybody talks about evolution of digital, but nobody talks of data collection. Uh, I've been interacting with a lot of brands uh, who don't have even their websites. Uh, if they have a website, they don't have an analytics. If they have an analytics, they are not reading the data. So. Uh, Emphasis on first party data collection is extremely, extremely important if as a brand you want to evolve in the programmatic as well as from a dynamic creative standpoint. Hence what uh, is extremely crucial over here uh, is that uh, 
your IT team who centrally looks after the data and the marketing team who just uh, talks to them saying that my data is going on, what is going on, that data needs to be put to use. Only then you will be able to see success with that data and with dynamic creative uh, optimization as a brand. Otherwise, we'll have to be heavily re uh, be dependent on the partners to provide us that dynamic creativity. Otherwise, your data is not going to be put to use. Let's say third party vendors or partners have their own data repository basis their data collection they don't have the first party data of the brand himself hence the brand needs to invest a lot into their first party and then that is how they need to link it with the third party publishers in a brand safe environment where uh, the data is being fast uh, pushed into a hashed format without any personal information uh, being there and that is how you then put that data to use from a dynamic creativity Ron, another question which I think uh, we'll have to put across to a tech partner for us, right? So, I, all of us are aware, we've read the news that Google has postponed the phasing out of uh, third-party cookie, but as a marketer, I'll be very cautious and I will not want to, uh, you know, like celebrate uh, this right now, right? So, while India, we are 90% uh, plus... Uh, you know, Chrome users, but rest of the market, Chrome is I think 40, 50, 60 percent depending on the market that we are in, right? And uh, regulatories, regulatory bodies may push uh, all of us to start not tracking third party cookies at some point of time. So, what are your, uh, you know, suggestions, inputs, uh, strategies to be ready for that phase, if not in 2024, 2025? maybe 26, 27, but I think all of us will have to start preparing for that yesterday. I think we already started doing that when the first uh, draft came in. Uh, we were, I think, uh, hybrid and uh, the likes of it have already started, uh, we collect our data from an ML perspective, machine learning and AI perspective. So we were ready even before uh, uh, that first draft came in that, you know, third party data, you're not supposed to collect it and keep it in. So uh, with that in mind, we, our whole mechanism depends on that. We also contextually uh, do a lot of our, uh, uh, our ad placements. So we are prepared for that eventuality and if it does come again, if this uh, percolates further, we have, we have uh, our own data, the way we culminate that data. At the same time, when agencies want to uh, check the data with us, we are open to that too. So, from that perspective, yes, we are ready. Uh, it has been postponed, that's fine. But if any eventuality, if it's tomorrow also, we are ready to serve in a non-third-party uh, environment. Thank you, thank you. I think uh, we, we've got a lot of uh, valuable insights from uh, both of you. Uh, do you have uh, some you know, closing remarks from your side or... Yeah, so closing remarks would be to the brands, uh, please make sure that your first party data collection is robust. Uh, don't keep your data into the analytics, please read that data. Invest into tech, uh, because if you don't invest into tech, nothing from a third party environment or a dynamic thing is going to work. So please invest a lot into tech and data collection and that data is going to be put to use. That's my final statement from a dynamic creativity standpoint. How about you, Lawrence? Uh, I think uh, technology has really evolved uh, to an extent that we know what we can do. I, and I am sure all people sitting in front of me have that uh, amount of maturity to understand where they're placing their ads on. Uh, yes, always when it comes to DCO, because you're speaking specifically, specifically about that, it is more to do with the fact that uh, uh, trust even the partner that you are putting trust on to deliver the uh, end result and uh, they should also be in touch with you regularly. That is the few touch points that you need to keep in mind, the guardrails that you need to ensure that this happens. And I think from that perspective, uh, everybody is mature enough to understand. Uh, our, uh, you know, if my point of view, I think, you know, earlier what I uh, spoke about, the Cadbury campaign which got cans for India, I hope that all of us together don't let it be the last great dynamic creative uh, story from India and all of us strive towards probably delivering something you know much better than that in next uh, 
few years. Thank you.